This is uh, Peter Everick. Um, Peter Everick called me uh, after my conversion. He saw me on Channel 10. And uh, we had a little chat about uh, the electric car and stuff. He did mention at that stage that um, he was going to do a conversion. And uh, finally now Peter has finished his conversion. It's totally road registered. And um, I'll let Peter take you uh, for full information on this electric car. And we'll, very shortly we'll go for a drive as well. And he'll explain more about the Peter. Peter, take it away. Yes, uh, my name is Peter Ervik and I live at the Jim Boom Bar or Flagstone actually. And uh, this car is a um, Mitsubishi Lancer 92 model. Probably should be a little bit better car, but anyway, that's the one I did. And um, I have a um, 72 volt system, which is DC. Uh, the motor is actually out of a um, uh, forklift. It's been reconditioned, so it's a pretty good, uh, pretty good order. And um, it's an Altrax, Altrax um, controller, and we have a DC to DC unit, and the batteries are uh, maintenance free, sealed, liquid um, or lead, lead acid, 120 ampere hours, um, deep cycle, and as you can see we've got three batteries in front here, <coughs> and there is uh, three batteries in the boot. And we also have a um, vacuum compressor to give us vacuum for the assisting the brakes. And what did that um, um, the vacuum pump cost you, Peter? Oh, that was a bit expensive, three hundred something dollars. But mm. in the future, I would buy a different one, which is very very quiet. This one is a bit noisy. Yeah. But it's got a switch, and it turns off once the vacuum That's, pumps up. Yeah. Do you need a vacuum reservoir for that? No. You don't. Okay. You could probably have one, but uh, uh, it's got the reservoir in, in the tank itself, you know, so. Yeah. I mean, the car cars doesn't have it uh, with a petrol engine. They don't have a reservoir. Some cars do, actually. I know some cars have a small reservoir. But um, in the boot, uh, can, we, can we go around? Yeah, sure. Sure, Peter. <coughs> In the boot here we have um, three batteries and one here. So we still have our uh, spare tire in there. Yep. And um, and this is just the spare extension leads extension lead. which you need to uh, yep. charge up sometime. And you got another one. So basically you got six um, 12 volts. Yeah. Uh, deep cycle giving you a total of 72 volts. That's right, and that's the intelligent charger which charges up the batteries. Yeah, are you happy with that charger? Yes, it um, switches itself off once the batteries are fully charged. Okay. And it can show you at what stage the batteries, this this uh, panel here shows you at what stage the batteries yeah. are at. And what did this charger cost you, Peter? I can't remember exactly. Um, mm -hmm. it, it wasn't, around about $500 or something. All right, okay, yeah. That's just a lithium battery of mine, which I've given you. It's got nothing to do with this car. It's just for, you know, that's a... Souvenir, yeah. Souvenir. <laughs> okay. And up the front there, you can see through there, we've got the two, uh, two um, um, instruments. One is for the voltage. Yeah. The other one is for the amperage. Yeah. And um, then underneath, you've got a main switch, manual switch to isolate the whole system. Yeah. And also an electrical switch. All right. So uh, you can uh, flick, flick it and then uh, the relay will drop out, you know. All right. That's pretty good, uh, Peter. Excellent. I'll, I'm just going to take a little bit of your warning sign that you put up here. Okay. So I believe there are two people which have blown up their motors by revving the All right. engine in, in neutral. Yeah. Now uh, people will be interested, um, Peter, to find out more about, um, tell us a little bit about that motor and uh, tell us a little bit about the range and also tell us the cost factor. Well, the, factor. the cost so far uh, is, is probably a bit over $8,000. Yes. Um, because I didn't pay anything for a car, but I have spent some money on it. I had to put new CV 
shaft in and a few other things. Um, so um, the, the cost hasn't been matched. Now the range is not fully the proven yet, but I think I'll get about 60k mm -hmm. if that's uh, not too steep, if it's on the flat. And um, it recharge, of course, uh, in four to eight hours. Okay. And uh, the, the cost of driving around is the best part of the whole thing, you know. Yeah. I mean, there, there might be one cent a kilometer or something. Excellent. And uh, that's not much at all. And if you had your own solar panels on the roof, it probably wouldn't be anything if you don't take the capital cost of the batteries or conversion or anything into it. You know? Are you planning to put any solar panels on your roof? Yes, I will actually. Not not on this car, but uh, on the house, you know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because as you can see, I made some stickers here and I uh, talk about 100% conversion. Yeah. And there is no CO2 yeah. um, at all. Yeah. That's my phone number and uh, it's, uh, you, you know, CO2 free. Yeah. It's 100% CO2 free. Yep. If you have your own solar panels. <laughs> so the environment, I'm very... Um, yeah. I'm very concerned about, and I think I like to put this in uh, now while I have opportunity. Mm. I know there is a big discussion in the world about uh, um, whether there's man-made or if global warming is is fair income or not. You know, well, in my in my opinion, it's very easy to work out what the situation is because we all know that warm water melts ice mm -hmm. and uh, ice. Uh, the North Pole and the South Pole ice caps are melting. Mm. I mean, you can see it from outer space, they are disappearing, and the oceans are warming up. Mm -hmm. Now, if we fast forward that situation a little bit to when the, they are both gone, of course, sea levels is going to rise to 20, 30 meters or whatever, and inundate most of the cities in the world, and that's pretty serious. But the most serious thing is, equator is very hot, and the poles are cold, and that is what gives us our currents and our wind. Mm. Now, if you switch that off, the planet will burn up. Now, that would have to be the more serious issue you can, you can think of. Yeah. So, um, electric cars and uh, reducing carbon emission, that is a very, very important uh, issue. Yeah. So that's really what motivate, motivate, motivates me more than anything else. And people, you talked about North and South Pole. Um, North Pole is uh, very, pretty much home to you because you come from somewhere <laughs> there originally, isn't yes, it, Peter? Yes, the, the climate has where, changed. Yeah, where, um, yeah, originally where were you born, Peter? Uh, I came from Norway, but that's over 50 years ago. Yeah. I've been back there many times since then. Excellent. And. Um, but in Europe, they are light years ahead of what's happening here in Australia. I mean, yeah. if you register an electric car yeah. in Scandinavia, yeah. I think also in, in London, yeah. you don't have to pay for registration. And if you drive it into town, you don't have to pay for parking. They've got special car, uh, sites, you know, where you can get your car charged. You have to pay for the electricity, as you imagine, but... Uh, yeah. And so on, so... Uh, so, now... Uh, Peter, would you mind giving us a ride in your electric yes, car I, I love and to. for our viewers as well, so so they get an idea of what your car feels like and drives yeah. like? Yeah. yeah, and explain to us a little bit. You guys want to get in? Yeah. 